Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. I feel like I need to reintroduce myself yeah, to man. you. Yeah, man. It's only been like, what, maybe a little over a month? It ain't that. been that long. But it feel like it's been a long time, it has though. It been. Yeah. It was a much needed break. But y'all yeah. don't want to hear all of that. Let me go ahead and do the YouTube thing. If you yeah. are new to the channel, go ahead and consider hitting that subscribe button. Yeah. If you are a family member, I'm pretty sure by now you have your post notifications on. Because that's yeah. the reason you came up over here. Right. Because you got that little ding dong. <laughs> so... We appreciate y'all. Let's go ahead and get into Power Book. And yeah, I hope y'all had a, a happy Thanksgiving too, man. Yeah. A, and a safe one at that. Yeah, staying Corona free, y'all. Yeah, yes indeed. Uh, in my opinion, the episode started off a little bit kind of slow. You know, coming up off of a break, I would expect to see a little bit more fire. But I enjoyed but, it. But I re I did I did enjoy it, though. But I was looking for a little bit more. But yeah, I felt like we were watching a two-hour episode. Yeah, yeah. For no I, reason. Yeah, the episode it could have been like really, this. Really, really, really long. Yeah, but they slow wine this. Yeah, so it, we pretty much picked back off. We left that on the break uh, with Sax and McLean working together. And we already knew that McLean was freaking setting up Sax. I don't see how Sax couldn't see that, but Sax is so far of his own A, he can't even see his self skit. <laughs> <laughs> but did y'all see Meth yeah. showed up at the office? Yeah. That he wasn't Davis up. McLean. That nah. was Meth. <laughs> I see you. I see what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> so we saw him and Sax decide that they won't stack the jury so that the jury can be on their side so they can win the case. And I'm like, clearly. Come on. Clearly, the judge should all have seen that y'all was stacking the freaking jury. Because she was like, okay. So you don't have any other questions? Yeah. So you're going to choose him? You're going to choose her? Really? Talk about so because he's thoughtful. Like, what? <laughs> no, he's going to feed into the narrative. I mean, case in point, you got this whole high profile case and you choosing these people? But I seen it all the time. Like oh, I, absolutely. I've been called on jury duty before. And they told got, you got in there. They ain't never. <laughs> I ain't never been accepted. But I'd have been to at least two. And the people that I see that they chose, I'll be like, they told you huh. for one of them that because I have children. Yeah. Or it was because at that time we were mentors to a lot of children. Yeah. That we would have that he would have a bias. Yeah. 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 So yeah, they kick they kicked me off. Mm-hmm. So, we see uh, Diane, Drew, and them. That whole family done just <laughs> fell apart ever since Tariq has come into the picture. But, in my opinion, I think the problem is, is that Kane is jealous of Tariq. Oh, absolutely. Because Tariq just came into the game, I mean, and he is pushing so much weight and making so much money. But we know that uh, Mo don't know the means in which Tariq is moving the product. So, we saw this episode finally... Uh, Diane peeked it out when she went to see Tariq at the dorm and pretty much was pressing him and pressing him. And so, well, no, take that back. She was, uh, she was chasing down Drew. Yeah, chasing down Drew and Drew showed him how the product was being delivered because he done drew them. We seen Drew to hook back up with Everett. I'm like, you dummy. And Everett is <laughs> this, getting yeah. product from the app. Yeah. So he's getting product. So that's how they found it out. So, uh, Diane started pressing uh, Tariq about it and was like, pretty much, I'm going to tell Mo. So she told Mo, and Mo was like, this is brilliant. Yeah, which I, which smart. to me, I mean, it's brilliant because these cats can't rat him out. So it's a, it's basically a win-win. Win. Yeah, it's a win-win. And when she asked Diana, she was like, so what, you want me to shut him down? Why? Because you don't slept with him? <laughs> like, things are not going your way? She was like, you're going to have to get over this. And she was like, Ma, I never slept with him. She was like, but what you're going to have to do is just get over it because this is money over everything right yeah. now. Yeah. Your little, your little feelings don't matter in this. Exactly. It's almost like your little child heart, your <laughs> childhood sweetheart, they broke your heart. Now everything got to mm -mm, get yeah, rid of nah. everybody. Nope, nope. Nah, because like, like Mo said, Y'all forgot about what this is all about. This is about making money and not getting caught. And that goes along with Kane. Kane oh is God. still out of freaking control. He really out of pocket. Oh, uh, did he done went over to the dorm looking for Tariq and freaking Braden and what's his brother name? <laughs> Trace. Trace was over there. Cause Trace done went in there and stole all of Braden got throwing pills, talking about some I had to, you know, treat my boys, you know, we wanted to turn up and all yada yada yada. And he was like, bruh, I need my stuff back now or I need my money. And so him and Trace got to fighting. And that's when Kane walked in there 
And Trace will run his mouth, think because he a Western that he can say whatever the fuck he want to say. And immediately, you know, Kane style pulls a gun out on him mm -hmm. and end up taking both of them hostages and putting both of them on, on the, the corner, corner to do that work to push weight. I like me some Brayden, but like I told y'all the last time, Brayden talks too much. Yeah, always. He's talking about some Kane. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know about you. We kind of partners now. Kane was like, how the fuck we partners? Yeah. I don't even know you. And first of all, how the world you know my name? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, Brayden, see, see, yep. this is what's going to get you hemmed up. Yep. Or hurt. It, it did get him hemmed up. Is it because he got up, kidnapped. Yep, got kidnapped and ended up on the corner. I know, I knew that Trace wasn't going to be able to cut it. Even though um, Brayden was like, you know what? I can do this all day long. But my brother Trace, he, <laughs> he ain't cut people. for this. He's scared of people. He ain't cut for this. That's a, oh, but Sounds I, like a cop. But we got to appreciate Braden's style, though. It's, oh, Braden, it, he did it, that. It, it, was, it was stereotypical <laughs> that he went to the bros and pulled out a blunt. And, and the bros gave in. Yeah. <laughs> That's what make the world go around. You, That's their kryptonite. A nice old blunt. So they got to find up a blunt. And of course, I was like, he got these cats high. Perfect time to be like, hey, I got all this junk. Hey, y'all help me sell this. Give you 50%. Well, now he said 50%. I don't even get, know what he said. You get a discount. It yeah. was some kind of discount they get. So he ended up moving all his weight. And of course, Trace <laughs> ain't doing nothing. He out there trying to go to the payphone. I was like, bruh, payphones don't work no more. I mean, the whole thing just came off of his hand. Yep. Both pay phones don't work no more. So Kane ended up coming back around, scooping up Braden. Braden showed him my soul everything. So we went back to pick up Trace. He getting him. Trace out there getting hemmed up um, because he asked a stranger for their cell phone. Like, hey, bro, I'm out here. I need your cell phone. And he ended up getting his tail beat. And if it wasn't for Braden begging uh, Kane to let him go out there and rescue him. But whole Kane's whole point was he wanted to put the fear of God in their heart or the fear of Kane in their heart. Which pretty much worked on Trace. But uh, Braden was like, my brother ain't built for this. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> I can do this all day long. Yeah, but he said, the only person that I'm going to let whoop his A is me. I'm the only one that can beat him. But by the time he got out there to him, he had got his tail beat. But they didn't even show that part of even even yeah. what, what happened. But when Kane and them was on their way back home, Ramirez. Ramirez. I said, here we go. Because I knew when the, the lights went up, I knew it was my Ramirez. And, uh, got anything to say? Mm-mm. Uh -uh. uh, so, Ramirez told them, told Braden and, and Trace, go back to my car. That was the gig getaway right there. I mean, yeah, yeah, giveaway. yeah, did giveaway. Uh, so, Ramirez was like, what you doing? You know you can bring so much heat on the organization picking up. Two white boys yeah, that, 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 yeah, that are Westerns and got them on the corner pushing weight. He said, we got calls about this. Yeah, we got calls. So you better be lucky it was me that came out here. And that reminded me of um, back in the day, this is when oh, I was no in way. high school and my uncle became a police officer. And so we out in the, <laughs> we was out in one, uh, I think it was the. Probably McDonald's parking lot. No, nah, it won't McDonald's. Uh, God darn it. I can't even remember. It was a grocery store freaking parking oh, lot. I know what you're talking about. And we was out there cutting up and some stuff broke out. And versus when the stuff broke out, you know us, we going to stand around and, and look and see what's going on. Hmm. But luckily, my uncle got called to the scene first. And he told all me and my cousins, say, look, you know what? Pack up your skit and get the fuck up out of here. Because when they get here and y'all know who they are. When they get here, they're going to lock up all of y'all. Well, no questions asked. We said, you ain't got to tell us twice. Oh, <laughs> we got in that car, start that mug up, and we were, boom, yeah. gone. <laughs> so, yeah, I know about the right cop showing up. Mm -hmm. So, Maria, Ma Ramirez is their ace in the hole, but that yeah. daggone cane boy, he is not he trying to hear him at all. Nah, he ain't trying to hear him. And yep. I like what Maria is. I can't talk tonight, but anyway, y'all know what I'm saying. It's, yeah. it's, it's late. <laughs> what he was telling him, he was like, listen. At the end of the day, you don't work for yourself. Yeah. And you don't work for Auntie Mo either. Yep. You work for Lorenzo. I work for Lorenzo. So yep. whatever goes down, it brings down his organization. Exactly. So you need to get your skit together. Exactly. I said, that's it. So he went back and reported that to Mo. Absolutely. And of course, and Mo was like, I mean, not Mo, but Rear was telling Mo, you need a man to handle Kane. I was like, yeah, because he's not going to listen to a woman. He's so stuck in his head that he's supposed to be running the organization, but he too high headed right now and too trigger happy to run the organization because the moment he gets started, the whole organization gonna be blown, yeah, <laughs> be blown up anyway. But of course, 
Mo didn't want to hear that. And he was like, you know what? Because she was like, this belongs to Lorenzo and not you. That's Lorenzo's I son. I belong to Lorenzo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not you. So I, I would do the same thing Maria said. When you get in trouble, you call Lorenzo then. <laughs> That kind of did work, though. <laughs> yeah, it kind of worked. So then we got the scene where uh, Mo had confronted Kane uh, about. She was like, "What you doing? You know, you you got these, you know, these white boys, and you trying to, you know, bring the organization down, and you know, you gonna get us caught." And so they get to arguing back and forth, and he was like, "You know, this ain't your house, Maya. This house is is Lorenzo' house. This is Dad' house." And they get, and this ninja end up putting his hands. On his mama, I said, boy, that's the worst thing you could have ever done in your whole entire life. And immediately he regretted that yep. decision. He was like, he tried to reach out and she, she was like, oh, hell uh -oh. no. She had her, I don't have no hateration, hateration yeah, outfit and, on too. And, and me, I, I have no tolerance for mm. a man that put his hands on a woman. I don't mm. care. I don't care what she doing. You, in your best Thing is, even if she's hitting on you, try your best to get away. Try your best to get away. But yeah, I'm one of them people. Somebody can't take but a hitting, but yeah. so long. But, you, but they I, knock your way out. All means necessary. Yeah. Get out. Get get. If yeah. you got to run, escape, whatever you got to do in order to prevent. Because I I I'm not. Yeah. 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 I I done, I don't. Definitely. Seeing people who've been through that. I mean, I've never physically witnessed in my presence a man beating a woman. I have. But I have witnessed people saying that it happened. I encourage them to leave. But, of course, people do what they want. Love blinds you. Be like, well, he still love me. Like, oh, hell no, he don't. <laughs> yeah. He hitting you like that, he don't love you. Mm -mm. Nah, he don't love you. So, then we seen Cain end up at the prison talking to Lorenzo. And Lorenzo was being super nice. I was so like, cool you know what? It. This seemed like this is a setup right here. Because I'm like, <laughs> yes. like, he done put his hand on his mama. Your wife. Your wife. And I know that's your son. But I know my daddy, when he, when he was living, if I had even like looked like I was going to put my hands on my mama, oh, he would have clocked my goddamn tail. Matter of fact, I wouldn't even be on this goddamn YouTube right now yeah. talking to y'all because I'd be six feet under, man. He ain't never lying. Yeah, so he was like, you know, you got to listen to her because you need to learn the organization so one day you can run it. Because you my soldier. I'm yeah. Like... And gave him a hug. I was like, uh-huh, uh-huh. That's the kiss of death right there. <laughs> That's the kiss of death. The kiss of a hate walker. And then when he turned around and Lorenzo winked his eye at the guards, I said, yep. And he got in there, they cut the cameras off, and whooped his tail up. Or, or like on Hustle and Flow, whoop that trick. That's what happened. He did. <laughs> got and, his tail whooped. And then he stepped in there afterwards, bent down to it, but just looked at it. I said, yep. as if, don't you ever. ever. He told him, said, yeah, don't, don't you, you ever, ever put your hands on, on my on wife. My wife. Again. Yeah. So... Davis McLean them finally makes it to court. <laughs> <laughs> so Sax is up in there questioning because uh, y'all remember when uh, Davis had went to the prison to to talk to uh, Two Bit or Francis, Francis to Johnson. convince him that you need to testify, and if you help me out, I'll help you out. Matter of fact, if you I help me you. out, I'll have you out back on the corner pushing weight by the end of the week. And because oh, got his yeah, rocks off. Yeah, but before that, he was like, I ain't no snitch. I ain't going to tell nobody. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, but, you know, I ain't no snitch either. <laughs> Listen, you had me behind bars too long. I'm I might tell on you. <laughs> I'm going to get the whistle. Nah, I ain't going to snitch on you. Cause oh, yeah. Because snitches get stitches. I got something for that too. Huh. All right, you take your stitch. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't staying in it. Orange is not my color. So... Sax, we saw question him about being a part of Ghost and them organization, um, having Ghost watch, yada yada yada, going down the rap. Who's Tommy Egan? You yeah, know him. yeah, and he was like, I never heard of him. I don't know of any criminal activity. I mean, he was going down the line, so he I could tell. That. Yeah, I could tell that McLean, he prepped me him. meth, prepped him for that because I was like, he doing too got doing good with these questions, but eventually, Sax realized. McLean screwed him because he looked back at him and was like, uh-huh. Because mm -hmm. he said, I, I lowered it up. He said, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I know. You but know. it kind of got a little bit sticky because Tasha wasn't expecting for Tariq's name to come up. To come up. And uh, 2-Bit brought his name. I was like, uh, I did help out 
the son. Um, the son he was lost. Because he was lost. It's like, oh. So, Tasha was like, hmm, what's going on here? What's going on here? Because Tasha is starting to side our McLean a little bit anyway. But, yeah. So, after that, uh, I can't think of his name. The guy that he got to give him the um, sex got to give him the, to help him. What's his name? Um. Uh, God darn! I know yeah. you're talking about. Uh, 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 old boy. Old boy. Yeah. So after, again. yeah. So after the trial, old boy was like, "You done screwed me again." <laughs> <laughs> now I look like an a hole, and I had to go back and explain that this freaking criminal is this one now. I said criminal. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> this criminal is back on the street, and he we didn't even get nothing from him. But that sack sack style, like y'all always falls for God darn sax trick. Exactly. And it's 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 high time for for sax to get his though. Yeah, and I'm I'm here uh, for it. Now we've been waiting on. We matter of fact, we've been waiting on it now for what? <laughs> and now he got his his niece Riley in the mix, and she getting on my everlasting nerve. Everlasting nerve, yeah. And I'm like, um, Tariq, how long can this girl creep around everything that you've done, um, everything that you're around, and you catch her? Red-handed most of the time. Yeah. Before you put two and two together. I know he sighed on her, but I don't think he looking as closely as he need to to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, she taking pictures of his phone. He come in the room. She got his journals, his books. Mm -hmm. And then she started talking about, I'm sorry about the drink. And I'm like, Tariq, keep asking questions. Huh. Keep asking her questions. Yeah, she drugged you. Hey, don't let um Riley be like Angela the ghost. Because Angela was the one that took him down. Because... Yeah. Don't end up like Holly. Yeah. <laughs> but that's it, y'all, man. And two big got out. Yep. So with yep. Ghost on watch on his wrist. Yeah, got Ghost watch on his wrist. But most time when people get out like that, they right back because he gonna do something Absolutely. dumb again and stupid and right Absolutely. back up in prison. But I still am concerned because I'm like, did Davis McLean show his hand too soon in this trial? Ah. Uh -huh. Like, let this thing string on for for a few, for a while. I don't and know. And then show your hand. Because now they have an opportunity to go back to the drawing board and flip this thing. Yeah, because at this point, McLean is not concerned about, about Tariq anymore. He's concerned to get the win to get Tasha off. So he get Tasha off. Like he said, he don't care. He'll, he'll sacrifice Tariq to get Tasha off. And that's a win in his book that he won a big uh, high-profile case, which is good for his business. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll that's see why how this care. goes. All right. Straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty self. Two up. Two down. Holla.